today from Martha Bakes. Cheesecake you've been waiting for. The New York cheesecake without a crack in the top. One of my most requested recipes, here it is in all its glory. And New York cheesecake made extra special with a topping of fresh Bing cherries. This is a very pretty serving. Individual New York cheesecakes. And what about these? Oh, so glorious. Little sour cream topped individual mini cheesecake cupcakes. A very nice dessert. And the ricotta cheesecake, rich, fresh ricotta with a flavoring of lemon and orange. You're going to really adore this cheesecake. All of these, I'm gonna show you how on Martha Bakes. New York style cheesecake, well, it's rich, it's smooth, it has a graham cracker crust. It's really good, the ultimate cheesecake. Well, today we're gonna to show you a cheesecake that is not only ultra, ultra, ultra delicious because it is the best of its kind, but one that doesn't crack when you bake it. We're using a springform pan. This is what a springform pan looks like. The bottom comes out. Now to secure this even more, we're going to put aluminum foil not in the pan, around the pan. And another piece. Do a crisscross, just crimp this up around the pan. This is only to prevent any leakage whatsoever. Now we're gonna butter the pan with very soft butter so the crust does not stick and the cake will release easily. So now the crust, graham crackers. These are called old fashioned original. They don't have honey, they don't have cinnamon, they don't have chocolate. Just break them up a little bit and put them into the food processor. We need 12 graham crackers and two tablespoons of sugar. So easy. Grind these up. You really want this finely ground, no lumps. And now add your melted butter and it's six tablespoons of melted butter cooled. And don't forget a pinch of salt. We'll just put a pinch, all the salt that can fit between your first three fingers. There, very simple, very good. Put all of that right in your prepared springform pan. Now just take this meat pounder. Just pound very quickly. You can use the back of your hand here and you'll get a nice crust, but it won't be as smooth. So there, that is a very nice crust. Now put your chilled crust right into a 350 degree oven for about 15 minutes. And now for the cheese filling. It might scare you, you need seven packages of Philadelphia cream cheese. But this 10 inch cake serves a lot of people. And this should be at room temperature. Notice it's very soft. So beat this until it is nice and soft. And you're going to mix in another bowl while this softens up even more. All purpose flour, a half a cup and two and a quarter cups of sugar. A whisk is almost as good as a sifter for doing jobs like this. And this is going to be mixed in with one cup of sour cream, also at room temperature. One and a half teaspoons of pure vanilla extract. When you're baking, you might as well use the best. Now we're gonna add a little bit of the flour sugar mixture, a little bit of the sour cream, and an egg. We're going to have five eggs. Pour them in one by one. And then a little bit of the flour mixture. 
a little more of the sour cream. And two eggs. Continue alternating the ingredients until they are all incorporated into the mix. While this is mixing, make sure that you have a tea kettle full of water because you're going to use that boiling water to fill your pan. And I have a pan already here. This will be filled. This is the baked crust. You can see how firm it is. That will be a very nice base for the cheesecake itself. Mm, it's heavy. It's 56 ounces of cream cheese. <laughs> Don't bother adding it all up. You're gonna probably not want to think about the calories that are in this cake. Now, if you wanna gill the lily, you can add a little bit of lemon zest to your batter. You just add a, another dimension. But uh, there you have it. Isn't that just beautiful? Now, you can pour the water right here or you can put it in the oven and then pour. Actually, I'm gonna pour it while it's here. And I love my new tea kettle. Oh, this is the best, so big. Hard to find a big tea kettle these days. Halfway up the pan. There, that looks good. And right into the middle or lower third of your oven for 45 minutes at 350 degrees. Then reduce the heat to 325 and continue baking about 30 minutes longer. And guess what? You're going to know something that most of your friends don't know, a cheesecake without a crack. <laughs> this New York style cheesecake can be made easily into individual cheesecakes like this with a wonderful topping of Bing cherries or as mini cupcakes with a sour cream topping. Really cute and really delicious. We have the batter already made. It's exactly the same, those seven packages of Philadelphia cream cheese. Spray a dozen paper liners in a muffin tin with nonstick cooking spray. This helps you get the cheesecake out of the paper liner easily. And just pour some of the batter into a little pitcher. This really makes it easy to fill little cups like this. And pour almost to the top. Take your time. And these are gonna bake at 350 degrees. They have no crust in them. You do not need a water bath. And the surprise topping is my mom's favorite topping for cheesecake, which was sour cream. She loved that sour cream topping. A little bit more right there. And these individual, very generous sized cheesecakes, these are four inch cheesecakes. Prepare the graham cracker crust in the same way by freezing, then baking. Once they're cool, fill them with the remaining cheesecake batter. And once they're baked, we'll add a really sweet and juicy cherry topping, which I'll show you how to make later and leave a half an inch for the topping. Yum. Mm. Now, just as we did with the big cheesecake, we're going to put boiling water halfway up these pans and start the cooking process, but don't pour it into the cheesecakes, whatever you do. <laughs> pour it right alongside. This starts the cooking, keeps the cheese really tender. This is called a bain-marie, a Marie's bath. I know it might be a coincidence, but each of these cooks for 15 minutes in a 350 degree oven. Put your timer on. And now we'll show you how to make the sour cream topping. It's very simple. One pint of high quality sour cream. Do you know that a pint is a pound the world around? Those are those little ditties that you learn in school that actually serve you very well later on in life. One tablespoon of sugar and one teaspoon of vanilla. Stir that up. Every cheesecake my mother ever made had this sour cream on the top. Here are some that we baked a little earlier and just put one tablespoon of this topping 
on top of each cupcake. This flattens out and adds a different texture and a different flavor to the mini cupcakes. Mm, these are so good. And put them back into the oven for another 10 minutes. So now to cherry top the individual cheesecakes. We have Bing cherries, two pounds for the topping, and remove the pits. Half of these cherries we're going to puree. The other half are going to be used whole as decoration. And now into the cherries, we're going to add a quarter of a cup of sugar and a quarter of a cup of lemon juice. Very easy just to squeeze a half a lemon right into the food processor. That'll be just about a quarter of a cup. Now puree this. It makes gorgeous cherry juice, doesn't it? It's fantastic. And pour this into a strainer and press through the strainer, giving you a rich, dark cherry puree, really. Now, the best part is under here, so always use a rubber scraper to scrape this part of the strainer. Always the best. Don't forget that. Okay, so there. And now half of this is going to go into the saucepan. And we're going to gently bloom the um, gelatin. And we want one and a half teaspoons of gelatin. You do have to dissolve it over a gentle heat. It's very, very important. I think it's dissolved. It looks dissolved. And we just add this right to our other puree. If you add too much gelatin, it's gonna taste like a stiff jelly. That's not the idea here. And uh, add your cherries. Stir them up. Now these little individual cheesecakes have cooled and place five or six cherries on top of each of the cheesecakes. Now pour carefully a little bit of the juice so it covers the top of the cheesecake. And this has to chill for several hours. The gelatin will set and it will give you a glorious topping. I love ricotta cheesecake. It's less rich than the New York style. It's made with fresh ricotta cheese. It has a flavoring of lemon and orange. Very, very good. Served with fresh segmented oranges. This one is very simple. It's fresh ricotta cheese, a flavoring of orange rind and lemon rind, and I'm grating it into a very fine zest, as you can see. So just uh, about a teaspoon, a large teaspoon of the lemon and a large teaspoon, heaping teaspoon of the orange. Now the ricotta itself, fresh ricotta, get the best you can find. And ricotta cheese has a tendency to be quite wet. So I made a little cheesecake sack, put the ricotta right in here. Uh, it's two pounds of ricotta cheese, uh, drained for a couple hours, uh, hanging over a bowl. So you can see, look how much water has dripped out of the ricotta. And that would make your cake quite wet if you left it in. So just cut it down. I use the hooks right in my kitchen and some good strong cord and a double or triple layer of cotton cheesecloth. Do not use that polyester cheesecloth that they sell at the car wash store. That is not what you want to use. Always the natural fiber. And this is now dry enough to make the filling out of, actually. So into a big bowl, just dump your ricotta. And I like texture in my cheesecake. You can put this in the food processor and get a very smooth cheesecake. But the New York cheesecake that I just showed you how to make is smooth. And uh, I wanted a little texture in this one. The pan, springform pan, nine inch. And you do not have to wrap it with foil because we're not going to put this into a bain-marie. It just bakes dry right here. And this is also crustless. So uh, you have to butter the pan though. Same method, brush, soft butter. 
And if you bake a lot, keeping a little bowl of butter like this in your fridge and just lift over ends of quarter pounds and just keep them until I have a baking day. Oh, and don't forget, flour your pan, kind of essential. Sprinkle in the pan. Now just take the pan and knock the flour around inside the pan. And then bang it out the excess like that. There, floured pan. Very nice. Ready for the filling. We're going to use six large eggs. Whisk these up a little bit. Just break the yolks. And we're going to mix one cup of sugar with a third of a cup of all-purpose flour. Very few lumps. And this is going to get incorporated with the eggs and the ricotta and zest. Adds a wonderful flavor and a wonderful color to the ricotta cheesecake and a teaspoon of very good vanilla. Now, you can flavor this cake with other things. We've tried it with Sambuca, an anise-flavored liqueur, very delicious. Uh, we've tried it with Frangelico. So whatever you like, you can uh, experiment with. Stir this together. This will have a very nice cheesy texture. And add a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. Add your sugar and flour. Makes a slightly thicker batter than the New York cheesecake. Mm, does that look good? Very tasty. So pour this into your pan. Your oven should be preheated to 325 degrees. And this puffs nicely and then just sort of shrinks again into a nice, thin, manageable cheesecake that uh, looks very pretty, cutting a wedge on a plate. Just wiggle it a little bit, get it right in the oven for about 55 to 60 minutes. You wanna get it when the center is just wiggly, but the rest of the cake is done. And now, how would you like to see the cheesecakes? Look at this one. This is the New York cheesecake, baked to perfection. Notice no crack, an essential aspect of this particular recipe. And I'm going to release it very carefully from the springform pan. The pan was prepared well enough so that it releases very well. Oh, how gorgeous. I'm just going to place this with the bottom right on the pedestal. Adorned or unadorned, that is a gorgeous cheesecake. And when you taste it, you're going to know that that is the best New York cheesecake recipe. Now, the ricotta cheesecake, look at this one. This has to, after it bakes, it has to chill in the refrigerator for 24 hours. An essential step in the making of this beautiful cheesecake. Look how gorgeous the crust is. It's a natural crust. I could probably loosen this and take it right off the base, but I just want you to feast your eyes on that ricotta cheesecake. Isn't that pretty? And the little cupcakes, so beautiful, decorated in their silver papers with little bunches of currants. The garden is so generous this year. Uh, we have beautiful berries, uh, white currants, pink currants, and red currants. And let's unmold one of the cherry-topped individual cheesecakes. Release the mold, yes. Oh, this looks so beautiful. Release the bottom. Put it right on your plate. <gasps> Doesn't that look good? I don't even think it needs a dollop of whipped cream, which, if you want, you can put on it. So there, what do you think? Have I solved your problems about the crack in the top of the cheesecake? Or the recipe for a really good ricotta cheesecake, crustless? How about the individual cheesecake with the cherry topping? 
looks a lot different from the cheesecake that you get in the deli, doesn't it? And these are so charming, crustless little cupcake cheesecakes. They're very, very good with that sour cream topping. Well, you have very versatile and very delicious cheesecakes for your pleasure. From Martha Bakes.